Okay, shall we start? Uh, hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to uh, the webinar uh, of uh, Global Space Investment Accelerator. Uh, this third webinar is uh, focusing in on uh, intellectual property protection and technology readiness level. Uh, this webinar is the third in series of uh, the, uh, let me say, co-organized uh, webinars between the UAE Space Agency in partnership with CryptoLabs. Uh, that uh, basically is under our uh, program called the, Glo the Global Space in the, uh, Investment uh, Program. Uh, the initiative is intending to promote uh, innovation and ensure the continuity of all of our projects, uh, despite, of course, any challenges that uh, we, you know, uh, we sometimes see today because of the COVID-19. Um, the falling under the umbrella of the National uh, Space Investment Promotion Plan, the GSIA aims to position uh, the UAE as a pioneering country in the space industry through innovation. It also seeks to, need to nurture the sustainable UAE space industry, foster healthy national ecosystem through innovation and R&D, and contribute to a diversified knowledge-based and ideation-based uh, national economy. One of the four components of the GSIA is to focus into intellectual property, which aims to identify which IPs are space related and can be commercialized to build fruitful technologies. My name is Nasser Rashidi. I'm the director of the space policy at the UAE Space Agency and the GSIA program director. And I'm happy today to be moderating our session. And uh, for those, if you allow me, for those who didn't have a chance to attend our previous uh, webinars, I would like to mention that in our first session, uh, we discussed space entrepreneurship uh, guiding participants on how to become a successful entrepreneur in the space sector and create their own space startups. For the second webinar, however, we invited experts from the space industry, from the space startups, from governments, and from funds, even today in the UAE, to discuss the latest market challenges and emerging opportunities for uh, entrepreneurs, in particular in the field of space, which refers to the recent commercialization of the space sector so-called new space. During the last session, there were a lot of questions regarding IP protection, uh, technology readiness level, so that one of the main reasons why we have decided and really coordinated with our distinguished speakers today to organize this webinar. For this third webinar, we have invited experts from different government entities to discuss existing practices and um, processes, let me say, related to intellectual property right protection, how to evaluate the maturity of a new technology through a technology readiness level method. And also one of the mandates of the UAE Space Agency is to develop a national space regulatory framework that provides appropriate protection of intellectual property rights, building onto the existing regimes here into the UAE and in alignment with the UAE Fourth Industrial Revolution Strategy. Intellectual property and innovation are at the core of our fourth UAE Industrial Revolution Strategy and assessing and securing innovation and patentable solution advancement and breakthroughs. It aims to establish the national environment that encourages the development of new technologies and incubates innovations, efforts, and initiatives of the younger generations in the UAE. During today's session, we will be discussing how to protect new inventions and how to evaluate the maturity of our new technologies and applications at the level of space field. I would like to introduce today our agenda. First, as a, moder as a moderator, I have uh, already going to give some uh, new, uh, let me say, some, some introduction to the GSIA as well as to the new space innovation program. And uh, after that, it, we will have the honor to listen to His Excellency Fahd Mheri, the Executive Director of the Space Sector at the UAE Space Agency, to speak about the importance of IP rights in the space economy. The next session will be an introduction to intellectual property rights protection, 
by Ms. Marwa Hussain Al Harmouli, the senior administrative at the, UAE, at the UAE Ministry of Economy. After Marwa's session, we're going to listen to His Excellency Salim bin Shibib, the advisor of innovation, incubation, and SME projects at Abu Dhabi Department of Economic Development, who's going to talk to us about their method in attracting and uh, uh, entrepreneurs through an uh, innovative technology readiness level uh, that he's going to explain to us. Uh, we will then uh, listen to Mr. Jama Al Falasi, the manager of intellectual property uh, uh, of intellectual property disputes uh, unit at the uh, Dubai Economy, uh, uh, and uh, on the and as well as on the Dubai uh, DED comprehensive activities made to protect IP rights and to encourage their registration. Uh, we will uh, have the privilege at the end to hear from His Excellency Umar Al Mahmoud, the CEO of the ICT Fund, on their successful approach as the UAE ecosystem change agent. After all these sessions, we are going to uh, basically tackle all the questions openly uh, and verbally by the different speakers. As mentioned earlier, we're going to select, uh, let me say, the most relevant and the most, uh, let me say, repeated by various uh, you know, uh, participants, and the rest of them were going to reply in writing. I would like uh, now to uh, give a quick brief on the GSIA. Maybe we could also share the, the bios of the speakers before I jump into the... Yes, thank you. So, um, you can see uh, that uh, through our session, we are going to build on a practical experience coming from the various speakers on the various topics, as well as the lessons learned that can actually be also an advice to our various participants and entrepreneurs and those who intend to uh, apply for IP uh, registrations as well as to look for uh, you know uh, 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 incentives for their technologies to be patent. I would uh, like to quickly uh, and very briefly share uh, as mentioned earlier our GSIA program consists of four main components, a framework that basically put the process on how we incubate uh, um, uh, innovators and how we actually accelerate startups here in the UAE. This framework uh, was developed uh, in coordination with various stakeholders in the UAE and is going to be published soon by the UAE Space Agency that provides clear clarity on the process uh, for uh, you know, innovators and startups and entrepreneurs to apply to become part of the new space uh, program. Uh, as part of also this program, we, are, we have an IP study, uh, whether it's uh, space or actually related to space. And we have been uh, conducting uh, various uh, interviews and surveys with the space as well as non-space sectors collecting these various IP uh, patents and through, uh, through the New Space Innovation Program, we're going to look for opportunities to monetize these IPs as well as create spin-offs. Last but not least, uh, another component of this program is to look for possibility for Sustainable Space Investment Fund. Uh, with this, I would like now to give the floor to uh, His Excellency Fahad Al-Mahiri to talk to us about the importance of IP and its role into the space economy. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Nasa, for that uh, introduction. Um, again, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. I'm honored uh, to have you all here with us today and would like to thank my team and Crypto Labs for their support in arranging these webinars. Uh, if it's the first time for you all joining us here today, this is, as Nasa mentioned, our third webinar we have held since we started. And um, uh, my name is Fahad al -Mihiri. I'm proud to be the Acting Executive Director at the UAE Space Agency since I joined about three months ago. 
During the last session, we had a very interesting discussion and we felt that out of the questions and discussion, most of you wanted to know more about IP and the techn technology readiness level aspects. So I won't say more about the TRL as we had started that discussion during the last session, but when it comes to intellectual, intellectual property, this lies at the center of the modern company's economic success or failure. With the advent of the fourth industrial revolution, skills and knowledge have become the only source of sustainable long-term competitive advantage. As many of you may be aware, there are major companies that exist today that actually own nothing significant of physical assets or value, except knowledge. Fighting to defend and extend the domain of their IP is how they play the economic game. Today, more inventions are being developed than ever before, thanks to the adoption of stronger IP regimes that allow innovators to pursue solutions to global challenges. More than just a product, every new invention produces positive follow-on effects, including creating jobs, extending life, saving time, and increasing well-being. Even failed inventions yield useful lessons. In the space sector, the rise of new space is having profound implications for intellectual property rights. As we have seen during the last years, there is a shift in the aerospace industry. Off-world missions that were once the domain of state-owned entities are increasingly becoming performed by licensed private companies. Now, I know a lot of you during the last session also asked, what is new space? Where is this term coming from? So the term is really used to refer to a sector of a new aerospace companies and ventures working independently of governments and traditional major contractors to develop things faster, cheaper, uh, to allow us to access space, spaceflight technologies, all really driven by commercial ends. Now, given the complexity and expense of such endeavors, space companies will need to ensure that their IP is protected through the use of registered rights, such as patents and design, and of course, the unregistered rights, such as copyright and trade secrets. Effective and strong intellectual property regulations are fundamental to the proper functioning of all aspects of the innovation ecosystem. Regulation defines what activities are allowed and provides protection for all parties involved in science and technology-based innovations. As a leading country in its innovation efforts, regionally and globally, the UAE announced its space policy, strategy, and investment plan to keep pace with the global movement, focusing on creating a deal flow of innovations in the industry and developing a national space legal framework with an effective intellectual property regulation in alignment with the UAE's fourth industrial revolution strategy. At the UAE Space Agency, we envision a future of Emirati scientists and inventors who operate space technology companies within the country and who pride themselves in exceeding expectations. We are doing our part in preparing and equipping the youth with the tools they need to lead the region space sector. With that said, during this exciting session, the team have pulled together a fantastic board, broad panel with uh, where we will be discussing the fundamentals of IP protection in space and related sectors, as well as have more discussions on what is happening in regards to TRL standards. I'm hoping that you all learned something here with us today by providing you with a better understanding of how to register and protect your inventions. Thank you all for being here with us today and thank you again for the kind speakers who are here to support us. Thank you, Nasser, back to you. And also, you're on mute. Thank you, Excellency. And uh, thank you a lot for your insights and emphasizing the importance of IP and being uh, in the heart of the new space innovation program and the space economy in general. I would like now to give the floor to our second uh, speaker, uh, uh, Ms. Marwa Al Harmoudi, to talk to us about uh, intellectual property rights protection and the role of the Ministry of Economy in this regard. Uh, Ms. Marwa, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you so much for this introduction, uh, Janir Nasser Rashdi. So now I will share my presentation. So is it feasible? It's feasible, can you make it an expanded view by any chance? I'm trying that. It should be control L, right? So it's fine. So you can see, you can go to views. View okay, I think now it's okay. 
Perfect. That's perfect. Okay, so today I will talk about the uh, IP production. And our sector is named entrepreneurship, intellectual, and intellectual property sector. So first of all, I will give you an overview about the sector, like the history of it. In 2006, it was the constellation of intellectual property departments to be under the Ministry of Economy. In 2012, it was under Ministry of Economy, which consists of three departments. The first department it is copyright and trademark and industrial property. But now industrial property is called International Center for Patent Registration. And in 2018, the national program for small and medium, medium enterprises and the projects joined our, our sector. And here is the, uh, the law related to each department in the sector. Now let's go first with the International Center for Patent Registration. So we have under it three sub departments, let's say, patent, industrial design, and utility model. So we will start with the patent. What is a patent? What can we have, what, what is, what is, can uh, we call it a patentable or something we don't have, we can't call it a patentable. The protection term of a patent. What is the requirement to have a patent? So let's start with the patent. It is an executive, and intellectual, pro, uh, intellectual property right given to an inventor. If its inventor, uh, its if invention is a new product, providing a uh, process, providing a new method or a new technology, a new technical solution for a certain problem. But there is, uh, should be a requirement in this all invention. For example, the invention should be novelty, should be new, should have an inventive system and should be industrial applicability, like we can apply it. So if these three requirements and an invention, we can, go give, uh, we can call it unpatentable. And the protection term of the patent, it is 20 years from the filing date. And uh, or uh, 20 years from the PCT filing date. And here is the subject matters that we can, we can call it patentable. For example, plant varieties, methods, treatment, surgeries, uh, guidance, rules, and, and etc. Now let's move to the th second thing, which is utility model. Utility model will all the time we call it a small patent. Why? Because there is the same requirements of the patent and utility model. It like should be novelty and inventive step and industrial applicability. But the inventive step, the, its criteria uh, it can be lo lower than the patent. So let me give you an example to understand it more. Uh, like for example, uh, if we have a can before, we can use we can open the can with the opener tool. But nowadays we can just push the cover of the can and we uh, we can open it. So this improvement we call it utility model, not a patent. And also the protection term is different. In the patent we have 20 years, but in the utility model, it's just 10 years from the filing date. The last sub-department uh, sub is industrial design and drawing. It is composition of two or three dimensional, like if it's a product or it's a drawing. And the protection term is it, it's 10 years. Now let's move to the uh, patent application and uh, examination flowchart. For example, first the first step of the apply for a patent or industrial design or a utility model is to submit your application. And the application should have a claim in both Arabic and English languages. So uh, for example, what you want to protect. Also the, the full description in both languages also for example, you have to scrap everything in your invention. And you have to submit the bibliographic data, like the general data, the addresses, the names, the, who is your agent, if you have an agent. Also, uh, also if there is any drawings, should be drawings in all the sizes, in all uh, sites, in Arabic and English. Then it comes to us as a department, then we check all the documents, if it is correct, we invite him to pay the uh, examination fees. 
after the examination fees, it's the applications goes to the examination process. After that, the the examiner they examine the application if, uh, if it is accepted or rejected or partially accepted. So if it's accepted, it will go to the normal routine, which is a patent grant. After that, we publish it. Within 60 days after the publication, 60 days, we issue the certificate. But it is, if it is partially accepted or it is uh, rejected, it should go, we have to notify the client that there is something missing in your invention. So he has to amend his application. After that, it will go with the normal uh, stage. And here is all applications should be, all documents should be applied within the application. For a patent application, we have two routes. We have direct filing and we have the PCT, the PCT filing. So what is the meaning of that direct filing? For example, as we see here, like we apply in the foreign countries anywhere. So we have 12 months to come to enter to the UAE with a priority claims. So within, if you apply within 12 months in the UAE, you will not miss your uh, priority. Then it will go with the normal procedure. But for the PCT route, you have more time. For example, you will have 30 months instead of the tw uh, 12 months. And here is some achievements of the ICPR department, which is the first one, uh, 200 patent initiative. It is an initiative with the Department of Economic Development Abu Dhabi and Telecommunication Regulatory Authority. So here we support financial and technical support for the inventors in the field of the, uh, of the ICT. The second one is TIP, Technology Innovation Bionese Initiative. It is a joint initiative between Ministry of Economy and Economic Development, uh, uh, Department of Economic Development in Abu Dhabi. It was integrated in 2018. So we have, we had just one track before the TIP Healthcare Award. And for this year, we have, for 2019-2020, we have the three tracks, which is healthcare again, energy tech and environmental so let's now move to the second department in this sector which is copyright so what is the copyright what is the rights they have what is terms so let's just start the copyright it is a legal right that grant to an author what is the meaning of of the work. Author so what is the work? It is creative completion, uh, art, science, and etc. So he has the author, he has two rights, financial rights. Let's move to the types of copyrights. We have here three types of the copyright. The first type is collective, derived, and joint. The collective drive is uh, the collective work. It's for example, uh, someone who give a direction for a group of the pe uh, people to do this work. Then the work is will be published with the uh, the the name of the who gave the direction, not the name who wrote, wrote the the work. And the drive. The work is the work that derives to, uh, uh, its original from previously existing work, such as translation. Like if someone translates like a movie or a book or anything, so it's called derived work. Joint work of a uh, number of persons, number of people, they create the work, so it will be published under their names. And the duration of a pro uh, protection of uh, copyright, it is all his lifetime and 50 years after his death. The last department of this sector is trademark. So the trademark is any uh, anything have a distinctive form such as names, logos, words, letters, figures. And we have here five types of the trademark. The first type is a product. 
that the, the mark that put it on any product like Masapi, Alain, or any other product. Service trademark, it is for like, uh, for the services, for example, do or atasalat. Collective trademark, it is like, for example, for uh, any uh, engineering society. And uh, control and inspection mark, it is like, for example, uh, for ISO. The famous trademarks, any famous trade, any famous trademarks, for example, like Adidas, Nike, any others. And there is requirement for trademarks. Should be new, ad novel, not identical to other products, to other trademarks, I mean. So the production here, it is 10 years from the filing date, and it can be renewal for other 10 years. So thank you all for your attention. And if there's any questions, I'm willing to answer. Thank you, Marwa, for your uh, very informative uh, presentation. Uh, very interesting points. And uh, so happy to see also this effective partnerships that you have with various uh, stakeholders at a federal level and uh, at a local level. Um, I would like uh, now to uh, hold the, you know, having the, let's say the, you know, verbal uh, question and answer uh, towards the end of the session, uh, but we are capturing all the questions we have received so far. And with this, I would like to move to our next distinguished speaker, Mr. Salem Bin Shabib, the Advisor of Innovation and Incubation uh, Program and the SME projects at the UAE uh, at Abu Dhabi Department of Economic Development to explain to us more about the technology readiness level method and the ingoing efforts by DED Abu Dhabi in this regard. Mr. Salem, the floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's my pleasure to be with you again, Benir uh, Nasser and Benir uh, Fahad and all the distinguished guests. Uh, before starting with the uh, base uh, uh, presentation for today, which is about the technology readiness level, I would like to shed some light on the role of DED uh, Abu Dhabi alongside with other DEDs and the Ministry of Economy in protecting IP rights uh, uh, in all over UAE and specifically in Abu Dhabi uh, DED plays a great role in protecting the trademarks the IP and uh, also in providing a grant support uh, to register the patent uh, in support of uh, Ministry of Economy and other initiatives that we have in DED that provides uh, financial, uh, legal, and advisory support as well to the inventors and innovators in the ecosystem. Uh, towards that, we have uh, various programs. One of them is the uh, Takamil program, which is the uh, uh, proudly uh, saying it's the only program in the UAE that provides grant fund to support the registration of the, uh, of the patent in UAE. And I would advise all of, the, all of you asking questions about patents to visit our website, uh, takamal.gov.ae. I will post it uh, in, in, in a few minutes in the chat pod or in the Q&A uh, to get access to the services that we provide. Uh, in order not to um, you know, spend so much time on the, on the introduction, I would like to start with my presentation, please. Uh, Give me a hint if you can visualize the presentation. Yeah, okay. Yes, we can so, all see it. Thank you, thank you uh, Engineer Nasser. And uh, in our last session, uh, many of you uh, in the audience asked questions about the TRL. And for us, uh, on the technical side, we've either dealt with it or heard about it. So we thought of presenting to you uh, some basic information about TRL uh, from our role of being uh, a pioneer in the uh, innovation ecosystem in DED Abu Dhabi. Uh, so we put together some uh, information to explain the whole process, to explain TRL, its usage, etc. Without further ado, let me start by saying to you, what is it? So it's a measure of maturity uh, level of a particular technology. For us to measure anything, we need to bring it to the same um, commodity. So apples, apples, orange, orange. We cannot compare an apple and an orange unless we bring them all together in the same size or in the same format or on the same scale. 
So for us to measure technology and is it ready or not to be deployed, is it ready or not to be financed, we need to put it on a scale. So there is an international scale. It measures the maturity of the technology, as I just said. And it was developed by NASA, which is an aerospace agency, the, or the biggest aerospace agency globally, in the 70s and 80s. And it helped them back then to decide what technology to put on board a missile or a rocket or a, a satellite. And it helped them to choose the level of the technology they wanted to. And as the TRL emerged and evolved, it began to be used in various sectors like pharmaceuticals, uh, medical devices, defense, and space. And what do I mean about that? So each of those subsectors have their own definition of a TRL, and they use a specific terminology to serve that specific subsector. So we cannot put the same technology readiness level for space and for pharmaceuticals. We need different measures for uh, a medicine or a vaccine to be used on us as humans. So it will take a different steps and different levels. Uh, defense as well have its own specific TRL and also medical devices. They are more less rigorous than the uh, pharmaceuticals, but more sophisticated in terms of uh, the levels they are in. So this is basically to explain to you what is a TRL. It's a scale. So let's look together at the scale. Um, do you see my crosser? Okay, great. So the uh, definition of the scale is one of nine. So most of you know Richter scale, which measures the earthquakes, God forbid. But we use it to know the scale and the magnitude of an earthquake. Here, we use the scale from one to nine to know where is your technology is at, whether it's an ICT technology, whether it's a defense technology, whether it's a healthcare technology. And we deliberately used a, a scale today uh, as an example here, which is uh, you know, within the aerospace, but it's within the flight uh, domain. So if you have an idea, just an idea, or an observation that you put on a report for a new technology that will be developed, it's one. So it's called one. It's just an idea. Once you go above an idea and you start a concept and you apply uh, and have an application or a formula, it begins to evolve. The technology becomes level two. And if you can also read uh, with me in number three, if you have a proof of concept and you created the character for the proof of concept, now it's becoming more mature. So it's becoming on level three. And the levels keep growing and growing and growing until you have a successful operational uh, system uh, in uh, TRL9. These TRLs helps us a lot in deciding many, many things. But for the sake of this presentation and the various type of the audience, so we don't come from the same sector, uh, all of us, we group them for you. So in general, if we talk generally, TRL 1 to 3, which is the, the very low basic TRLs, we call them the early stage uh, concept. Here you register your patent, you register your copyright, you register your design, uh, engineering design, and you move later on to a proof of concept where you have actually a device, a basic device or a basic map or a basic MVP digital platform it's TRL four to six. And when you are ready to be commercialized and you have a customer testing your device, you're on a higher scale, and this is the later stage. These stages as well helps us as government, as financial, financing institutes to decide what type of, um, what type of uh, uh, financing uh, method we use. So as Marwa mentioned, we have a grant uh, for ICT early stage with the ICT fund, uh, Mr. Amar. And we give it to the early stage ICT, which are one to three. 
And this is an incentive that we give to the people who would like to register their patent. But if it's more mature, we need to give them uh, a better uh, grant system, or we try to ask them to uh, get an angel investment or a family investment if they are in the middle stage. Yeah? And once they evolve, they can approach VCs, they can go into IPOs if they are already in the market. So we use the TRL to help us understand what type of financing should be provided to that specific technology. And there are other usages of the TRL that I will explain later on. So this is in a nutshell, a single TRL for a specific sector. And there are others, uh, other TRLs for other sectors that can be used. If we put the TRL from one to nine and try to apply it on us in Abu Dhabi, we have a granting system, as I just mentioned, uh, that DED provides with its stakeholders. Uh, it's basically targeting TRL one to three and we register patents here, but then we have other um, tools that we use. So Abu Dhabi Investment Office have a, a venture capital fund for agricultural technology and they accept technologies on various scales of TRL. So they don't look at only ready to go, ready to market uh, technologies. They also look at early stage. Um, we provide an in-kind support for both proof of concepts and startups by giving them links to industrial experts, to factories, to uh, sector leaders. Uh, and also we have a Khalifa fund, and I'm talking only about Abu Dhabi. If, and if I put the whole UAE landscape, it will be flooded with entities that would love to support you to bring you to the market. Not to mention the regulation role that the ministry uh, ministries plays as well. Uh, so we have Khalifa fund as well, providing um, startup grant for the mature startups. Uh, also, they have other programs, uh, which is called Abtikari, and they provide incentives as well. So TRL Heal helps us to decide which type of fund we should give you. But if we put it in a very uh, light uh, you know, understanding, so it helps me as a decision maker or you as a, a technology uh, seeker to decide on the maturity level of the technology. Uh, it helps you set targets. So you can say, I would like to receive technologies on levels six to nine, because if you open it up, you will receive white papers and you will receive uh, startups. You have to know what type you would like to receive. It also helps in identifying the project planning for the development of the technology. So uh, when you know your technology is in level three, you should be very uh, aggressive in uh, developing the technology and reaching it to a higher TRL because you are in the valley of death and it's very easy to die. The technology dies very fast. Uh, as I mentioned, it helps the decision maker to select the technology and it helps to communicate and knowledge on a one scale. So when we announce that we developed a specific technology, we know what level it's in. If it's nine, it's ready to go to the market. If it's three, it's still on paper. So all of us, we understand where we are. Also, it's a tool for the risk assessment during the advancement of the technology. Uh, and it helps identifying uh, suitable types of fund for each level of, of uh, technology. So in a nutshell, these are the benefits of an applied TRL in a specific sector. And I hope I covered what is TRL, what does it mean? It's a, it's a scale from one to nine, and it's used in various sectors. And hopefully soon we will be seeing approved TRLs in the UAE by uh, competent uh, authorities for specific sectors uh, very soon, inshallah. Uh, I would like to thank you for being patient and uh, I am eager to answer your questions. Thank you, and Jirin Nasser, back to you, sir. Thank you, Salem. Thank you so much. This has been a very insightful, very helpful 
And I can't agree more that, you know, if we're able to establish at least a standard, or let me say, um, a, you know, you could always have specialized TRL for specific sectors if needed, but to have one that can cover the majority of the sector's uh, innovation, I think that would be a very good reference for various stakeholders from the funding, from the, you know, from an investor, from an an entrepreneur who actually comes. So we all speak the same language and uh, be able to assess and um, um, let's say have common expectation and common language when it comes to the maturity of the prototype of the product that uh, the business is actually offering. So Got this it. is very, very insightful. I think if you allow me, I would like to defer the questions towards the end of the session, just to give the opportunity to go over the rich material that we have here by all the distinguished speakers. And uh, with this, I would like to introduce uh, uh, our dear friend, Jama al Falasi, the manager of Intellectual Pro Property Disputes at uh, DED Dubai, who's going to share with us Dubai DED effective efforts as an IP gateway to the world. Uh, uh, Mr. Jama, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Nasser, for the introduction. First of all, I would like to, and on behalf of uh, the commercial uh, uh, compliance and consumer protection sector. I would like to thank uh, the UAE Space Agency for uh, arranging this uh, webinar. I'll be talking in my short presentation about uh, the IP uh, or the trademark uh, enforcement method we are uh, using, which is the IP gateway. Uh, currently, it serves uh, our role comes after. Uh, our roles come after the role of Ministry of Economy of, after granting the certificates. Uh, specifically, we are dealing with the trademarks in the meantime and commercial agencies. And uh, so, uh, what is the intellectual property gateway? It, it, it serves basically the trademark owners of the UAE registration uh, certificate holders. It is an enforcement portal where uh, we ask the trademark owners to uh, uh, record their certificate in our system to, to re receive the protection within Dubai uh, mainland, which are the licensed shops and when it comes to trademark uh, infringement. Uh, what we require from the, the users is a valid trademark registration certificate, uh, a, power of attorney, a power of attorney if there is a, an a attorney doing the uh, a representative for the trademark uh, owner, and a complaint description. The whole process earlier was only a ma manual service. We digitally transferred uh, the service to become fully online, and which uh, even we merged the inspection uh, system with the IP protection system to make the procedure faster than, uh, than what was it before. So the process starts by fi uh, first receiving a complaint from the trademark owner about an infringement against any of the licensed uh, uh, premises here in Dubai. After that, uh, there, there is a review stage. If it was approved, the, the complaint was approved, it will move to the next stage of inspection. Uh, and uh, the inspection assignment is uh, done digitally through the, the same uh, portal. And the last step is taking the action and obtaining the inspection report for the trademark owner. Some might ask uh, how much it costs. The complaint fee costs 2,000 dirhams for studying the case, and the inspection for a warehouse as uh, it is 2,500. The shop inspection is uh, 1,000, which covers three shops, and for any additional shop in a complaint, it will cost uh, 300. The service uh, channels is uh, either using the website or the application of the IP gateway. Uh, that is uh, a short presentation of uh, the, IP, the IP gateway portal. 
which is the IP protection service that uh, Dubai economy offers for the trademark owners and the time being and hopefully by the support uh, and uh, with the other DEDs in the other Emirates and Ministry of Economy, we can use this technology of the, the IP enforcement method to be used in other types of IP such as patents or uh, uh, copyrights and uh, that's it for me. Thank you, dear Jum'a, and thank you for, uh, you know, uh, emphasizing in a point that is very important about uh, how do we secure and how do we enforce the IP, uh, you know, uh, protection in here in the UAE. And I think that is one of the questions that is raised by one of the participants, but we'll tackle it uh, when it's the right time for the Q&A, if you allow me. So thank you again for your uh, presentation. And with this, I would like to move to our uh, next uh, speaker, His Excellency Omar Al Mahmoud, the CEO of the ICT Fund, who's going to talk to us about their successful story and achievements over the past years uh, as uh, being considered the UAE ecosystem change agent. Uh, Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Nasser. And I would like to extend my thanks to Crypto Labs and Space Agency for having me today. And if you just give me a second, I'll just put up my, my presentation for the day. Yeah, Amr, the floor is yours. Thank you. Is it, is it clear? Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. Yes, we can. So um, uh, if you allow me, I'll just give you a brief uh, introduction to, to the ICT fund. And my slides would be uh, giving the attendees today, uh, a high level uh, overview of the ecosystem here in the country with regards to technology, the ICT sector, and the space sector uh, also in together. So um, with uh, the ICT fund, the ICT fund was set up uh, back in the day uh, in 2007, where the concept was to develop the ICT sector based on the revenues of the telecom providers in the country. So in the UAE, we have a uh, regulation which stipulates that uh, any uh, telecom operator that exists in the country must pay uh, towards the federal government uh, at the ICT fund 1% uh, of their revenues with the ultimate purpose of developing the, uh, the ICT sector. Uh, so what we try to do with, uh, with, the, with the fund is to actually develop uh, three uh, main, you can say, outcomes. One is human capital in the country intellectual property, and third, uh, infrastructure uh, in related to the ICT sector. And uh, what we specifically do is we're aiming to build a knowledge-based society here in the country. And we've come a long way since 2007 till today, uh, where we have achieved a four-pillar strategy. So what the strategy uh, uh, is aiming is to build this knowledge-based society, but to, to ask anyone, what does a knowledge-based society a mean or what is it compromised? So in any knowledge-based society, of course, you'd actually have to focus on human capital number one. So with human capital investments, uh, we can actually then trigger uh, the R&D activities that would happen down the line where universities, R&D, uh, academia, uh, institutes would actually then start developing uh, the next best ideas out there. Uh, the third pillar is how to take this R&D uh, effort and actually commercialize it to become either a startup, a company, uh, or or even uh, an SME or a larger company such as a large uh, a larger company uh, which would exist in the UAE. And then, of course, um, a fourth uh, pillar of investment which we have is a, a national project which uh, exists across boundaries. Uh, it involves uh, uh, a plethora of UAE, UAE government entities. Everyone. Uh, focusing and coming together collectively to build uh, a national challenge or a national uh, milestone or achievement. And I'll walk you through some of uh, what we've been doing. So with, uh, with education, what we've been doing specifically is actually we've been doing uh, three specific things is what one of them is uh, the investment uh, in our scholarship program and in addition to supporting universities. So, so what we've done is we've sent uh, up, uh, abroad over 170 uh, technology students to study at the top 100 universities globally. Uh, one of them was the first uh, Emirati at MIT studying PhD. Uh, other than that, we have uh, within the country over 1,500 
technology students uh, that have gone through our program and we have graduated 350 engineers into the ICT sector, uh, all of them UAE nationals. When it comes to supporting um, UAE uh, education and institutes, we have set up uh, four existing uh, laboratories here in the country. So one of them is with um, RIT, the second is with the University of Dubai, we've set up the College of Engineering uh, with, with the university, and at the American University of Ras Khaim, we've also set up uh, ICONET, uh, which is um, a four lab uh, cent center at the moment. And then at IOS, uh, we've set up um, in collaboration with the higher colleges of technology, an, an IOS uh, lab where students develop labs, uh, develop apps regarding um, IOS uh, infrastructure. When it comes to R&D, we've set up uh, two R&D uh, centers and I'm walking through some of them. And then when it comes to incubation and national, uh, incubation and national projects, uh, we've also been active with uh, supporting uh, students going through boot camps Startups also going through boot camps, uh, such as uh, Seeds for the Future in collaboration with Huawei, and other projects uh, we did with Khalifa Fund, such as Abtikari, and also our, uh, our good colleagues uh, at DED and um, at the Ministry of Economy. We've also been working with regards to IP uh, when it comes to uh, supporting startups. Uh, what I'll just give you a high level, um, you can say. A snapshot of uh, what the UAE looks like from an uh, you can say from an ecosystem perspective uh, in the short time to come. So um, with those uh, with those uh, four pillars, um, again we we started uh, very back early in the day, just with education. Uh, once we had enough human uh, capital talent available in the country, we then moved on to doing investments in R and D. And those, uh, the outcomes from the educational investments, of course, would be human capital. Those people would work on the next best uh, technology, such as RNG projects. Uh, we have 18 of them at, at, uh, at the moment. We have two RNG centers set up uh, that are also, uh, you can say, uh, a honeypot for the human capital that is uh, being developed in the country. Uh, again, the, the incubation, stands, uh, incubation centers, uh, the programs we're working together with and supporting them and actually having these programs. And then, of course, the national initiatives, I'll, I'll work through some of them. Um, one of our biggest uh, investments, such as uh, on the national level, the, why I'm just going to present these, uh, these concepts is just to give startups here and students, researchers, what does the UAE landscape look like when it comes to technology? What is the government focused on? And what are the people actually uh, thinking in terms of the future roadmap uh, for the ICT sector? So uh, when, uh, when His Highness announced uh, uh, the Mohammed Barash and uh, initiative to transform, uh, you, you can say, the education sector in the country to becoming a smart enabled one, this was uh, done way back in 2012. And luckily today, uh, with this uh, pandemic that exists, uh, we were ready to hit the ground running. So the UAE infrastructure when it comes to education was ready. Uh, to hit the gun running to actually move and shift everyone to, beha to have uh, a digital, you can say, educational experience. So last year we, we had the first uh, smart generation being graduated, meaning the students who studied from grade seven till high school or to the graduate from high school uh, were actually graduated. So these students are actually what we call the digital generation. Uh, they studied uh, through a hybrid uh, system where they had books in addition to actually having tablets and PCs with them in the classroom. The ultimate purpose of this project was to actually have adaptive learning systems where the system would measure uh, all the KPIs and big data of every student and then generate uh, on the fly curriculum based on the shortcomings or the skill sets of the student. So this was the ultimate goal. Now we're still not there yet when it comes to the um, to actually generating on the fly an automated curriculum, but it, it is on, on the horizon and we're almost there. Uh, it does take time, especially with um, having uh, over half a million uh, students in the education and system. Uh, another project um, we, we were, um, we were uh, developing or we actually worked on uh, with uh, the Prime Minister's office and team is to actually have the UAE Awards for Good. It was a two prolonged uh, award. Uh, one was related to the um, robotics, which is to develop uh, the use, best use of robotics to help human, uh, humankind. And the second was for drones. So um, uh, with the UA Awards, um, if, you, if you find and seek uh, the YouTube videos of the teams, so uh, what, they, what they actually did was, uh, so this winning team here in front of us actually built a, a bionic suit where people who are paralyzed 
can actually stand up and, and use it to, to move. Uh, it was actually His Highness's uh, concept. He actually came up when he first saw a drone back in 2000 and uh, back in 2014, where he saw a drone for the first time at a government event. And he was briefed on what does this drone do? So the drone was actually um, flying seamlessly in midair. And then he was, uh, he was briefed that mostly drones are used in the device industry and, it's, and it has a bad reputation when it comes to civilians or uh, people losing their lives in, um, by mistake. So he said, what can we do a, a Drones for Good Awards where we uh, reward people to have um, the best application to support human beings instead of harm them. So thus came this idea, which was the UA Awards for Good, uh, which supported, um, we, had, uh, we had the last one in 2017. Uh, the, another, another project uh, which um, you can say uh, we, we were part of and we supported was the full transformation of the federal government uh, in the UAE, which to convert to a smart enabled uh, government where every public uh, department would provide uh, their services through, um, through a mobile application or through a, a mobile app where actually you can have um, access to that 24 hours uh, a day and seven days a week. Uh, it was, uh, this, this project was, was the deadline to be met for two years where all government departments have to meet this uh, deadlines. And, uh, and I think, alhamdulillah, we, the UAE has managed to convert all public, uh, you can say, sector services to becoming accessible through the mobile phone. And there's more to come and I'll share some, some more slides on what's on the horizon roadmap. And of course, uh, uh, one of the flagship investments we had was, of course, um, we were very proud to be part of this team, and we were very honored to be part of this um, this uh, project, project, which was the UA astronaut program, is to have every, um, uh, you can say, uh, every opportunity open for the people of the UAE to participate in, in actually reaching, reaching space. So, uh, so this program, um, you are fully aware of uh, the recent achievement by arriving at the ISS by Hazar Mansouri. And the second, you can say, um, cohort is, is actually being uh, put together. Uh, recruitment is actually happening at the Mohammed Barashat Space Center as we speak. Uh, Mars 117 initiative uh, is a, a prolonged uh, effort to reach Mars. And the, the idea is uh, by 2117, we would have uh, some sort of human presence uh, on Mars. With, so with that said, the uh, UAE was very keen to jump on board and actually have in some sort of um, uh, presence uh, on Mars, hopefully by that time. And actually, before that time, we actually start uh, the simulations and we start uh, the, uh, you can say the experiments and the, the, and the pilot missions here on the ground. So with that said, the idea is to build a, a mini city. Um, drops have been planned uh, by the Mohammed Barashid Space Center. Uh, the location has, has uh, been pinpointed uh, somewhere on Emirates Road where uh, this city would actually host a, a facility of sorts where astronauts from across the globe, from different space agencies, would come in and actually simulate uh, different space missions here on the ground and see how it, it take, what would it take to live for a prolonged period um, on Mars. Uh, with that said, uh, this facility is hopefully, inshallah, by, I mean, um, we're, we're putting it together with the Mohammed Barasha Space Center and we're just sorting out the details with regards to uh, the, the, the logistics, how big of a, a size, but the drafts and the plans are, are actually in, uh, have been drafted and we're tendering it at the, at the moment. Um, another, of course, uh, uh, my colleague from the Ministry of Economy, uh, we've, been, um, we've been keen on uh, supporting the Ministry of Economy and actually uh, supporting entrepreneurs here and also my colleague Salem. Uh, to register IP patents. The whole, the whole drive is we have in 2021, a KPI for the country, which is to reach uh, one of the top 10 innovative uh, countries on the innovation index globally. So, um, so with that, we've been uh, uh, providing grants uh, through our partners, uh, the Ministry of Economy and, and Abu Dhabi DED, for startups and researchers to file any ICT related patents. And um, we would then uh, cover the cost uh, through, uh, through you can say, uh, our grant system. Uh, another project uh, also just to give you a, a flavor of what's, uh, what's, uh, what is the ICT landscape. So uh, the Digital Vault is another project uh, we're working on. It is uh, basically um, a, a electronic digital vault 
which will have all your details. Um, it will have your uh, passport detail, your Emirates ID, uh, your visa details, all these details would be provided to you. And then you would then allow entities such as say your bank, um, say um, your school, uh, whatever de government department that actually needs a verified copy of those, uh, of those, um, of those uh, government um, uh, documents, you would then be sent either an SMS or through an app saying this, uh, the bank uh, the, such and such is asking for these details. Would you allow them? Just like what you get when you um, use uh, a single sign-on login such as through, through Google or Facebook, it would give you an idea saying that uh, this website would then take your name, your email, do you agree or you don't? So you would set the permissions. Same thing with the uh, concept exists, but when it comes to uh, what we call the digital world, and hopefully you would see this uh, by this year. Another, another pro, uh, project we're working uh, closely with our, with our dear friends at the Space Agency is the, the National Center for Space Technologies and Sciences. Uh, so the, the, one of the R&D centers we've set up uh, with UAU was the, uh, was the center. And the whole purpose of the center is to, to have uh, a home for the data that would be streamed back from the Mars probe. Uh, if you are aware that the, the, the UAE is, uh, is about to launch a, a Mars uh, probe, and then the data would then come back in 2021 and our research would be um, done on the Mars probe uh, data that's streamed back and it's hosted at the UAE uh, National Center for or UAU uh, National Center for Space Technology and Sciences. Uh, they're also making a, a just uh, on the side note, um, uh, a, a pan-Arab uh, satellite involving uh, all Arab countries um, to participate to, sh to show that Yes, uh, satellite manufacturing can happen on an international scale when, when the right, you can say, uh, people are invited and the right mindsets are set. Uh, another project, uh, which is a very interesting uh, project for us, was, um, uh, was the private-public uh, uh, partnership between Ittasalat, uh, British Telecom, Khalifa University, uh, and ourselves. So what we, uh, what we did was, uh, how, can we find, well, how can we solve challenges that come in uh, from from the telecom sector or from the ICT sector, and they are converted to either R and D projects, uh, master degree, you can say theses or PhD theses at the center, and then ultimately uh, having the chance to spin off those uh, startups uh, based on uh, all of the above. So so this is an, a live example of um, what the the center is doing. Uh, what they do is they uh, they would take a challenge that that is being faced either by the the police, um, health authorities, etc., and then they would then uh, convert it to an actual project and downstream it back into society or into the field. Uh, so there are many, many projects uh, of sorts, but at the same time, one of the benefits is actually having students doing their master degrees and having students launching startups and IPs being registered at the same time, all in one. So this was a very good example of what it would uh, look like when it comes to a public-private partnership. Uh, another uh, project, and I'll try to wrap up in the next two minutes, is um, Ankabut. Uh, Ankabut is, um, um, I think, uh, one of the attendees was uh, an ex Ankabut member here. Uh, so Ankabut is uh, the whole purpose of this network when it was uh, put together was to convert or to connect uh, all the academic, you can say, entities in the country to allow uh, R&D projects uh, to happen uh, based on the collective uh, processing power. Uh, of this grid. If, when you put all the collective power of all the um, uh, high power computing uh, that, that, w that, is that does exist uh, in the universities, you would then have a, a virtual supercomputer. So this idea was put together where uh, Ankabut uh, would allow these researchers to conduct this R&D uh, without having necessarily the right infrastructure. As we speak, uh, all uh, major universities in the country have this, and they're also connected to uh, the European equivalent of this national R&D network and the American Union one, uh, Internet 2 in the US, Canary in Canada, uh, and, and uh, Janet in the UK. And, and across the globe, there are equivalent networks uh, of sorts. Uh, it's also a fast and track because of the time. We want to give some room also for Q&A if possible. Sure. I, I'm... I'm uh, I'm wrapping up uh, as we speak. So um, uh, FedNet is another pr uh, project which uh, was 
to uh, connect all the government entities together and allows uh, different applications to be developed and different uh, data to be connect um, to be exchanged between all government entities as we speak. Uh, I won't go through this. Um, I think um, yeah, I think this is uh, uh, spoken about the overseas scholarship uh, and the Beata scholarship. Uh, and one thing I'll just finalize, uh, maybe with the interest, is uh, the Bashar uh, Smart App, uh, which was um, put together based on uh, 43 different government entities, allow you to launch a company on the fly through an app, uh, where all the um, different emirates uh, and free zones are connected, and you can actually launch a, a company through a mobile phone uh, through this um, through this Bashar uh, app, which allows anyone today with that app to actually. Uh, launch a company in any emirate of their choosing uh, just with the click of a button. Uh, I'll wrap up here and I'll stop uh, my presentation. Thank you. Thank you for, for listening. Thank you, Excellency. Very uh, informative presentation. Uh, a matter of fact, uh, a really up to date overview of all the activities and uh, amazing efforts. Uh, and I'm, I'm not being biased in here. This is really a very comprehensive approach to build and uh, you know grow an ecosystem in innovation and an ICT in particular. Uh, I love the fact that uh, you not only, I mean, you are uh, funding the different and supporting the different, um, let me say, components, being an entrepreneur, being a government entity that is trying to develop a particular project, being an academy. So not only at the level of a, an entrepreneur or a company or an entity, but even at the level of an initiative to help uh, you know, grow an ecosystem. So this is really a comprehensive approach and innovative. And indeed, ICT is the is the agent uh, for uh, you know developing an let me say ICT innovation uh, and uh, ecosystem in the UAE. Uh, we have a lot of questions. Number of them they have been answered in writing. I would like to tackle it. Uh, you know, um, just uh, since we have you with the floor with us, uh, uh, you know, uh, Your Excellency. There is a question about, uh, so if I am a uh, st uh, space uh, startup, is there a particular TRL level that I should be uh, meeting to be able to apply to your uh, uh, fund? Okay, so um, when, when it comes to direct um, uh, funding, we, we haven't opened a direct, you can say, uh, funding program for startups at the moment, uh, but we do that through our, uh, you can say, our partners, such as... Um, my good uh, friend here, uh, Salim, uh, who would then provide the funding and also through the Ministry of Economy, uh, they would actually provide the, uh, you can say, the IP uh, coverage. But if when it comes to direct investment of capital into a private company, we, we don't necessarily do that at the moment, but we do it through uh, either the programs, uh, which we showcase, like the, the Mars 2117 initiative, or the, um, uh, for example, um, uh, when it comes to um, uh, registering for a, a patent here in the country, uh, we can do that through our partners. But uh, our role would, um, you can say, uh, stop at the uh, our, at our government uh, partners level directly, and then we, they would then through those programs or through those initiatives, um, we would then uh, uh, fund that startup uh, if that startup um, is meeting the requirement of that project of sorts. Very clear. And a question to Salem uh, on actually uh, TIP initiative. Uh, this is uh, seems to be a very interesting initiative. And uh, the question is that how can we access more information? And does it also uh, cover uh, a company or a startup or a prototype at the level of TRL 3 plus uh, and can provide support for that? Or is it for lower or higher? Okay. So the, uh, the website uh, tip.gov.ae, which I will post in a minute in the Q&A, uh, withholds a full-fledged report about all the participants, all the companies, their details, their uh, technical details as well, and their contact details. So you can access them through the Outlook report that we created towards the end of the summit. It's available in the website. You can download it. It's a very thick um, report, but it have every bit of information that we've passed through through whole the, through the whole journey. With regard to the second part of the question, we support from one until nine. So when it's one to three and it's a grant that you need 
to register your patent in the UAE for the first time, we only accept first filing. We provide that grant through uh, the MOUs that we have with the Ministry of Economy and the ICT fund and other funds. And if it's a later stage, we do uh, the commercialization requirements with our stakeholders, as I mentioned earlier. Thank you. Thank you, Salem. A question to Mr. Fahad Al Muhiri: uh, Does the space agency have uh, an IP or an R&D that supports an IP in space field and it, it, that it funds it directly? Sorry, if you are on mute, uh, Your Excellency. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't find myself. Does so, uh, yeah, as, as the space agency, yeah. we, as a space agency, we definitely uh, do a lot in, in terms of funding uh, different projects today. Uh, we actually have about 33 projects, if I'm not mistaken, going on today through the UAE Space Agency, uh, where we are actually supporting uh, universities um, so it's really directly to academia and we are actually setting up, uh, um, uh, Omar mentioned the uh, UAE uh, University, the NSSTC. This is something that we have also been funding uh, heavily and we actually have a lot of personnel uh, supporting and, and learning from growing that entity today. So when it comes down to um, aspects of IP there, uh, you know, these uh, research centers and labs, these are the guys who are actually uh, working on the new technologies today, and they're the ones who uh, are going to be gaining the aspect of the uh, IP. You know, as a government entity today, it, it's not really um, in uh, you know uh, for us to 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 really hold these uh, in a sense, but it's really for the centers to be able to hold them and do something with them. Uh, we at the UAE Space Agency don't even have a screwdriver or a spanner or a lab available, uh, you know, at our disposal. It's not ours, so. We rely on the centers uh, to be able to do this and, and use this IP. So yes, there are several things going on. And yes, we are funding aspects uh, directly today uh, when it comes in line with the uh, STI that has been put in place and the roadmap there uh, to make sure that we are doing like ICT did where they have a full-fledged um, you know, phases in terms of where to go. We have the same as well when it comes to the space sector. So that is already in part of the big plan. Very clear, Your Excellency. And there was just a, a, a derivative of that question saying that, and if I have an IP that is not necessarily in space, for example, it's in health, would the space agency consider that? And if yes, what is the main condition? Well, I mean, again, it really goes into the details of what it is for health. Uh, I mean, if it is something that uh, could make sense to be utilized uh, for space, you know, as you know, going out into space is not something easy. It is not easy for astronauts to survive out there. It is a very harsh environment. And, uh, you know, there is a lot that needs to be done. And there's a lot that is being done today when it comes to the uh, life sciences, let's say. And the UAE is proud to be part of a working group, of an international working group uh, that uh, was actually just hosted a couple of weeks ago. And NASA invited us to be a part of it. And uh, we presented some of the uh, projects that are being done in the health services. So um, one of the projects that actually went up to the International Space uh, Station with the Hazar Mansouri was to actually uh, test uh, a stent uh, that, you know, goes into the arteries and veins to see how that performs. You know, these things uh, are all part of the test that we're looking at in terms of how they will perform in space. And, um, you know, for the future 2117 Mars mission, uh, these are all things that have to be tested today. So healthcare is definitely an important aspect if it has a space application, because you can imagine there are a lot of wearables today that are being looked at, you know, the electronics to, to you know, assess, uh, you know, a patient or an astronaut's, uh, uh, you know, essential uh, vital signs and organs. Um, you know, you watch any movie today uh, that is uh, sci-fi in the space side, you know, it's all about knowing the oxygen level, the temperature, uh, their breathing patterns, you know, the heart rate. So all of these things, uh, you know, are related to the healthcare. So yes, there are certain things that would, and of course, uh, you know, depending on what it is, we'd, we'd have to take a look into it. Very clear. Thank you, Your Excellency, for a very good, um, comprehensive answer. And I just wanted to also uh, tackle one of the questions. I think it's more related to Marwa, but of course others, if they see it relevant, is that of course, uh, uh, are we open for uh, registering a patent uh, from a non-Emirati citizen 
uh, as well as if there is a startup that is applying for you know filing a patent and that startup not necessarily existing in the UAE, say for example in an in, in India, uh, is that something that can be done um, through the Ministry of Economy or in particular the uh, the, uh, the, the 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 registration center? Marwa. Yes, it can be done, but it, they should assign an agent office that registers with us. They can't. Uh, they can't register directly to us. They have to assign an agent office. Okay. And the, maybe there is also a, a questions following that, saying that does that actually includes uh, some sort of an interna international protection? Say, for example, does that also include the guarantee of the U.S. office or the GCC office? Okay, if they have a guarantee from GCC office, they don't have to file again in the UAE because it's uh, UAE is a part of the GCC patent office, so it covers. And uh, there is no filing uh, internationally in anywhere. So, like, if have he uh, if he will apply for a PCT application, then there he can assign where he wants to protect his invention. So there is no a protection wide world. Fantastic. A question to our uh, uh, distinguished uh, speaker, Jamal uh, Al-Falasi, uh, saying that um, uh, one of the participants saying, if, if, if someone created a similar product to mine, would some changes in the details in a smart way, uh, what, would he be you know, making a violation in this case? And how do you deal with such scenarios in general? Uh, if, if the product was registered as a trademark, like a 3D design of the, the product, then uh, we look uh, at the similarities. If the panel decided that there is uh, an infringement, uh, then we take the action. Uh, but as a design of a product not, uh, not being a trademark, uh, in the meantime, we don't uh, take those complaints. Any other IP infringement complaints is handled by the Ministry of Thank you. Uh, there was also a question about pricing, and maybe it's related to you, Jamal, while you are with us, but also Marwa can, can add into that, which is the pricing model for copyrights and trademarks. Uh, what is the pricing model in here? Actually, I believe Marwa would have a better answer because they deducted the prices recently. Yes, on uh, April, we deducted our prices till like approximately 50% or more. Fantastic. For, uh, the, and, yeah. for the trademarks. Great. Uh, there was uh, actually also a comment about that and uh, how to make it incentives. Okay, so deduction is, I think, is covered. And how would you uh, see us in terms of security comparing to, you know, other uh, registrars uh, office around the world of securing the IPs? Is it for me? I, I didn't get your answer, your question. Sorry. So the, the, the question is that um, basically one of the participants was asking, saying that, you know, if I register here, how would you evaluate yourself in terms of securing my IP comparing to other places in the world? Kind of like a benchmark. Uh, where do you rate yourself in terms of being able to enforce the IP protection and secure it? So regarding the IP protection, it should be protected uh, fully, what well, will be secured for, uh, for sure. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Marwa. And thank you, uh, Jana. And uh, I think I'm just looking at the time. Uh, there was also general questions about, you know, uh, sharing some emails for some of the part uh, some of the speakers. Inshallah, we're going to do that. Uh, I mean, uh, from like like general uh, official emails where they can uh, access and even receive general uh, questions as usual. And uh, also, there was a question about the presentations. Inshallah, we're going to share, uh, uh, you know, these uh, presentations or sometimes maybe a little bit updated version of it. And uh, also there was a question about having uh, similar sessions in Arabic uh, as much as possible. Of course, we try to reach the widest number of audience and some of our audience are not necessarily here in the UAE. Some of them are international. So that's why we use uh, uh, English, but uh, for sure, inshallah, we'll consider to do similar uh, sessions uh, in Arabic, uh, maybe in more specific items like IP and so on. 
And uh, if you allow me, distinguished speakers, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude and sincere appreciation of your time, of your uh, very informative uh, presentations, of your uh, key messages. I'm just capturing a lot of key messages in here for my own uh, personal note. Uh, how the space agency, as mentioned by Mr. Fahad al uh, envision innovation as at the center of its uh, space program and a clear evidence of innovation in space is patents and therefore protecting these patents and incentivizing the registration is a key enabler. Uh, I can hear from the uh, Ministry of Economy and from the DED of Dubai about clear legal framework and process for registering and uh, your patents, your trademarks, and how to protect it and how it's being enforced. I can hear from uh, our colleague from uh, DED, Mr. Sam Shibabe, about how the UAE has already taken uh, uh, concrete steps uh, towards having a standard uh, TRL that will help to have a common language about what does it mean when we say innovation readiness level or technology readiness level. Uh, I can hear from uh, our colleague uh, Omar Al Mahmoud, uh, His Excellency Omar Al Mahmoud, about the incredible uh, initiatives and support that ICT is actually playing on various aspects, whether you are you know, in, in a project or you are a government entity with a clear initiatives and so on. Very ambitious plan and one of the most ambitious plan, probably if not in the UAE, in the world, the 2117 by having a human settlement in Mars. Thank you all. And uh, I would like to give an applause to, 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 to all of you with your uh, clear, uh, uh, you know, and very informative, uh, you know, presentations and thank all the participants. Uh, with their, you know, uh, interactions, very good questions, and uh, we also answered number of number of these questions in writing, so you can of course refer into that if you like. And uh, I see this uh, session being recorded, so inshallah there will be a link where people can hear it again, along with the presentations presented or an updated version of that. Thank you. With this, our session is brought to adjournment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.